Hello, interweb. It's KJ. So of all the things that I've ever thought would merit me talking on the internet, um, Yankee Candle was not what I thought would come up first, but it is. Um, because frankly, it's something I think a lot about, and thanks to Josue Blanco, who introduced me to the world of YouTube Yankee Candle Hall videos, so far the market is completely dominated by 11-year-old boys, and I think I need to get in on this, since I'm a 31-year-old woman, and I think I know more. Um, so, the story of Yankee Candle, the reason I need to talk about it, one, it's really difficult to write about scent. And second, I feel like my Yankee Candle thing fits in with that same part of me that pretends to be secretive about my love of chain restaurants, but I'm actually pretty publicly unashamed and celebratory of it. So it's that part of corporate America that I don't really feel comfortable about how much I love it slash need it, and yet I really like advertising how much I love it slash need it. So I think it's time to get it out there, talk about what Yankee Candle means to me, and what it could mean to you. So <clears throat> my introduction to Yankee Candle began when I went to college in New England in the late 90s, um, not too far from the Yankee Candle factory in Deerfield, Mass. In fact, I have a friend who worked there, but I think he got fired for stealing, maybe. Um, so, the Yankee Candle factory in Deerfield is like a miniature, low-budget Disneyland, but candle-themed. Um, there are audio animatronic knights in armor and German carolers uh, and then there's like a swanky boutique of scented things but anyway I went there in like 1999 I think and I came home with Sunflower and Stormwatch is that what it's called? which were recently re-released um, Stormwatch is currently one of these spring specials for 2011 and I can't use them because they smell like 1999. They smell like my sophomore year of college, which I liked, but don't want to go back there. Um, but being in graduate school now, well then, for the past four years until the summer of 2010, I found that I could not function as a student without a candle burning in my room. Um, I began calling it the fires of academia. Um, or the presence of the Holy Spirit, whichever. Um, but it was basically, I could be up till four in the morning writing, as long as I had Mr. Candle Flame in the corner burning. And then when I moved down here to the cottage, which you can't see, and I have a fun uh, shadow from Paper Lantern on the ceiling. It's really hard to point backwards. Um, then I suddenly had access to our beautiful cul-de-sac secret garden, seasons started working their way into me the way I haven't felt good about for a long time. I've hated spring for like 10 years until I started having, having flowers blooming out my window. Anyway, I started to need to match the smell of the season and this has started to become a ritual to where the point that I am now working, uh, my life goal, hmm, sad, is to have the right scent for every single month and season. And I'm really close. Really close. So I want to share that with you. I'm talking about why it matters. Because with this whole candle set thing comes a merger of what music I listen to so that it fits not only the season of the year, but in many ways the liturgical season of the year. Ordinary time, Lent, uh, Advent, etc. But it also has to match what's going on inside of me, what's happening outdoors. So I have a space in my room, which is sort of my altar to the seasons, um, which usually involves some sort of decorative book, plant, and candle. Um, and But the smell and even the color of the candle has to work out. So we'll start at the beginning of the year, which is the trickiest, because it's the end it's winter, 
but it's not Christmas. Christmas is the easiest candle season. Um, you've got everything from cranberry, cinnamon, sparkling angel, which is a real candle name. I don't know what sparkling angels smell like, but Yankee does. Um, so I've had the same Yankee Christmas scent for about four years now, but, but we're not going to talk about that yet. Because what happens when Christmas is over, I don't want to smell Christmas anymore, but I still want to feel winter. I can't jump on to spring. So this year, I don't have any because I burned them up. Um, I went for mistletoe. I wanted something sort of evergreen, Pacific Northwest, something that smells cold but doesn't conjure Father Christmas. And I think it was okay. People still walked in saying it smelled like Christmas, but I think that's just because their only category for fresh, evergreeny smells is Christmas. They just need to expand their paradigm. Um, I also have, oh, I could grab it. I bought Holiday Bayberry, hoping that that might work as a transition, because I thought Bayberry would be a perfect cold smell, but still... It needs to be a cold smell that can still smell like a candle. I'll explain more about that. Um, but the holiday bear, bayberry smells too holiday. But anyway, so that's that's about your season of January. That, that's about three and a half weeks of January that you need that cold candle smell. Um, winter without Christmas. Um, and I found that at my rate of burning about three and a half weeks is about my candle Yankee candle consumption time so once it's the end of January and February is near at least here in Seattle everything already looks green um, I've got a moss forest happening out that window um, and it's pretty incredible um, but it's not flowers yet it's not color but it's green so I needed something that smells like Things are growing underground, but not out of the ground. It's still cold and dark out, but there's something secret happening. Fortunately, last year, they came out with Enchanted Garden, which is literally the title I would want it to be called. Oh, that's my tweet deck. Could you hear that? Um, I'll turn that off. So, Enchanted Garden, as I recall, is the smell of cloves, geranium, a bit of... Um, what do you call that? Like wood musk? Sandalwood, maybe? Um, and it's pretty strong, but I love it. It smells like being out on a rainy day and lifting up a wet piece of bark. It smells like that. Perfect. So that's what I had last year. It was a special edition. The sticker had gnomes on it, which I, I never show the stickers. Um, I think it's presumptuous for them to think that I want to decorate my room with their photography and not just their smell. Um, maybe we could work on that. Um, but this year, it wasn't on sale because it was a special edition last year, but a helpful Yankee service person at Alderwood Mall, hard to find, but they're there. Um, helpful, that is. They're always there. That's the hard part. Um, said that Enchanted Garden was just evening air retitled. Evening Air is also out of print, so I consulted the Amazon.com and found a seller who was selling Evening Air. So, voila, Le Evening Air. Um, they, I bought two jars. They both arrived shattered and broken. Great. Thank you for that. Um, but the shipping was free, so... Um, so I repaired it with some packing tape. But Evening Air... Um, smells mm, musky, dark, woodland. However, um, so I just finished, I'm like down to here on the one that I bought. This is for next year. Um, already now, with it being the first week of March, I'm already like, when I come into my room and it's burning, I'm like, ooh, that smells too much like February. And it's March, it's time to move on. It's the trickiest time of year. Summer used to be the trickiest, um, now it's spring. Because, here's the thing, I love the smell of flowers. I don't like f flame that smells like flowers. Uh, they don't work. Um, candles shouldn't smell like flowers because I have no association with flower and flame, except perhaps 
uh, George MacDonald's The Princess and the Goblin. Um, that's a whole other thing. But anyway, in the real world, so the trick is to find a scent that smells like it should be a candle, but um, smells like spring. So none of that hearthy, cinnamony smell. Mm -mm. So I actually just wrote an email to Yankee saying they need a tea fragrance line. They need to frickin' have candles that smell like Earl Grey, green tea, chamomile, vanilla rooibos would be amazing. Thank you. Um, but for now, so this is a scent that came out maybe last year and I was hoping it would work, but it didn't. But I'm giving it a go this year. Early Sunrise um, is described as um, fresh citrus, um, some ginger in there. I think it's supposed to smell like having your cup of tea in the morning, but it's really citrusy, like almost, almost like wood cleaner citrusy. Ooh, just got an element of Fruit Loops there. Okay, try to forget I said that. Um, but the trick, the trick, so Yankee has like four categories. There's fresh, floral, food, festive, maybe some other, they apparently all start with F. Um, fresh is my favorite, um, cause food, if, if I smell cookies and there are no cookies, I'm pissed. So I do not buy any food candles. Um, especially the fruit ones just are rank. Um, floral, again, the flame and flower problem doesn't usually work, but the fresh is usually where there's a blend, like an herbal blend, um, of different, like, essential oils that to me makes sense to have smelling with a candle. But the danger with the fresh ones is they end up smelling like soap. Any Yankee candle that has the word rain or shower basically t smells like you're taking a shower at your grandma's house. Um, so, I'm go I'm giving Early Sunrise a chance, um, hoping that I grow to like the citrus smell, because I feel like it would be a really good spring scent. Also this year, they brought back, um, Rainbow's End. Now, when we went to Yankee yesterday, I was so congested, I still kind of am, so I actually couldn't smell, uh, which is tricky. I had to rely on the uh, discernment, the, the great discernment of my roommates. Um, so, we're at 12 minutes. We're gonna pause since we're two months in. I think that's enough for now. More on the Yankee process 